everyone, welcome back. This is Dad from DHTV, and today I have the iPhone 11 Pro. This is the midnight green version, and I'm gonna be unboxing this for you. Around the box, pretty simple. On the front, the iPhone with those three cameras, which is primarily the main difference that you'll notice physically from the previous iPhones as well as the Apple logo on the front. On the sides, similar. You just have the iPhone logo on the bottom, the Apple logo, and same on the other side, and the top. So very similar to previous iPhones. On the back is just the specifications. This particular model is the 64 gigabyte, and it's in the midnight green. That sound is amazing. So there's the iPhone 11 Pro, and it has a matte finish, actually. Oh, the plastic isn't even on the finish here, so just to give you a closer look. Let's peel back the plastic. And like I say every year, this is the cleanest this phone is ever going to be. It actually feels thicker. Not sure if it is thicker, but it does feel thicker. And of course, you're going to get your paperwork, so your quick start guides. Apple stickers, and the SIM ejection tool. Don't forget that's in there. Seems to be a big problem for people. Standard ear pods included. So these are the wired set lightning cable, I believe. Lightning. And then we have something new. Finally, a quick charge adapter here, and it comes with a USB-C adapter here, which is nice. So that's something to keep in mind as well, USB-C to Lightning. Taking a look around the iPhone 10 Pro, you're gonna notice that it's very similar to the iPhone 10s and 10s Max models. However, on the back side, you're definitely gonna notice some differences, mainly the triple 12 megapixel ultra wide, wide and telephoto cameras with built-in night mode. You'll also notice that the finish on the back is no longer glossy, it's a matte glass finish, and the Apple logo is now centered without the iPhone text present. Powering on the device, we'll take a quick look, and first off, you'll notice that the notch is still present. However, it's now housing a 12 megapixel camera, which is capable of shooting 4K video up to 60 frames per second. You also can take advantage of the new slow-mo motion or slow fee video using the front facing camera. The display is still 5.8 inches, the same size as it was on the iPhone XS, but this time around it's running a Super Retina XDR display, which is just a fancy way of saying it's better than last year's model. Splash water and dust resistance has been improved up to four meters for 30 minutes, so that's two meters more than the iPhone XS. You have the new A13 Bionic chip, which should allow the phone to just run in general a lot better with more high intensity tasks, especially with the three cameras it should help with that. Lastly, battery life has improved dramatically up to four hours longer than the previous iPhone XS. Now, with all of that being said, you can definitely check out the full specifications of these phones on Apple's website. But personally, for usability and functionality, I feel like this phone is overkill for most people. If you just use the internet, play some games, you're okay with photography, it's not a huge deal for you. I mean, most phones these days take great photos, but this is more or less going to be for someone who really wants the most or the best that Apple can offer, and that's this phone right now. So especially photography-wise, you can't do much better than this. Keep in mind, these are very pricey phones. This one here will run you about $1,000. And if you have a phone like an iPhone XS or an iPhone X, I don't recommend upgrading. It's just not enough. And I feel the 2020 models are going to be the iPhones to upgrade to. So keep that in mind as well. Also, the color, Midnight Green, I really like it. I like the fact that it's now a matte finish. It's much cleaner. Your fingerprints won't really stick to it like the glossy finish of previous models. Just keep in mind, different lighting seems to change the way this looks, especially in the sun. You can see in the previous clips in the sun, it almost looks white and creamy. So I'm not disappointed. I'm excited to use this for the next year and make videos and test everything out. So if you're interested in this phone, let me know what you want me to post videos on. I tend to go through pretty much everything you can do with these devices and I plan to do that as well. I also picked up a case. This one right here, it's just a standard clear case. 
It's from Spigen, Spigen. I've heard of them, I just can't pronounce the name. But it's the clear case, and it will compete, I guess, with Apple's clear case. So just to quickly see how it looks here, it says important remove. It actually feels very, very sturdy. Okay, so it's got like a protector on the back. I'm just gonna leave it on for now, just so we can take a quick look. So it definitely adds some bulk to the phone. If you want to get a clear case like this, it's very hard, very sturdy, has the front lips as well. That's the thing with these iPhones though, even with the iPhone 10, you know, they look so nice without cases, but they're so fragile that you pretty much are risking $1,000 if you don't drop it. And the guy at the Apple store said to me today that if you do break the screen on the iPhone 11 Pro, it's $400 to fix it. So keep that in mind as well. I'll link you to this case in the description. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos. Also click that bell notification button to be notified when I post new videos. And lastly, leave a comment down below. I try to respond to every comment that comes my way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.